In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as we do each and every day. Also, BlackRock Ethereum ETF helps the price pass $2,000 as the community sees Bitcoin ETF as a done deal. Also, breaking news just in, the number of addresses holding more than $1,000 worth of Bitcoin has hit a new all-time high. Where my long-term hodlers at makes some noise. And quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, Bitcoin is up 100% since this interview with Daniela Campbell. 11 months ago, $220,000 is in play. Gold price is the same price. Bitcoin is the monetizing gold. Preach. Also in today's show, Bitcoin ETS will drive institutional adoption in 2024. According to Galaxy Digital's Mike Novogratz and quoting Mike Alfred, it was so smart for BlackRock to apply for the Ethereum ETF to distract the crypto bros from the fact the Bitcoin ETF is about to be approved. They needed to reduce the buying pressure on Bitcoin while they finished positioning for the launch. Worked like a charm. Well done, Larry Fink. Also in today's show, Hong Kong getting ready to capitalize on crypto those next bull run. I'd be breaking down this report as well as Bitcoin soaring by over 85% before the end of this year. Not unthinkable, according to a crypto analyst who predicted the Bitcoin 2021 top. Also in today's show, Bitcoin to reach $175,000 per coin. According to a top analyst, I'll be sharing his timeline. We'll also be discussing a Bitcoin ETF 100x opportunity ahead. Quoting Michael Saylor, Bitcoin is an asset class, and that's a major revolution. If Fidelity and BlackRock and if 10 other ETF issuers all agree that Bitcoin is an asset class, it should be a 10x to 100x bigger than it is right now. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. But without further ado, let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Let's pull up Coin360. It should be able to see it on your screen. Please let me know in that chat. But it shows you Bitcoin is up 2.5% for the day. We're trading above $37,200. But surprisingly, Solana is the top gainer, up a whopping 22%, currently trading at $54. We also have Ethereum, which broke 2000 for the first time in, I think, 18 months. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen the Ethereum price action this lit in a minute. And that was thanks to the BlackRock Ethereum ETF application, which we're going to be discussing in a little bit. And they say, when in doubt, zoom out. So let's look at the, the gainers for the past freaking month. Bitcoin is on fire, up 36%. And year to date, we're up over 100%. I don't know the exact number, but well above 100%. We can see Bitcoin up 36%, Ethereum up 33%. We have XRP up uh, 33%, BNB up 20%, Solana up 144%, and Cardano up roughly 50%. And checking out uh, coin market cap. Shout out to CMC. I'm actually going to start being featured here as a top community account. They just recently reached out to me, which I'm excited about. But nonetheless, the Bitcoin market cap is the, or the crypto market cap is as high as we've seen it in a very long time. Currently at 1.42 trillion, virtually half the all time high back in November of 2021. We have roughly 74 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance is at 51 and a half percent and the ether dominance shut up, uh, shot up like a mofo yesterday from like 16.5% to now 17.8. And yesterday it was temporarily at above 18% on the back of the BlackRock news. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, we got FTT, the scam token created by Sam Bankman Fried, surprisingly up 121% for the day and a whopping 267% for the week. Holy moly. That just goes to show you there's so many DGENs out here in this space looking to get rich on that scam token. Ironic, right? We also have Terra Luna, another scam token, up a whopping 66% on the day and 75% on the week, trading at 77 cents, followed by Terra Classic, interestingly enough, <laughs> up 36%. Below that, we have Immutable, Solana, and Injective. Now, which altcoins are you currently most bullish on for this bull run? Please let me know in the live chat. I'll read all your comments out loud here shortly. Now, checking out the crypto bubbles, we can see the top gainers. For the past day, FTT, clearly the leader. We can check it out for the past week. And then we zoom out 
for the past month and virtually all the top cryptos are pumping in in the green. Nothing, even the scam tokens aren't in the red. So everything pumps, pump it up. Now checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, one of my favorite indicators. The Crypto Greed and Fear Index uh, is currently a 70 in greed. Yesterday a 69, last week a 65, and last month a 47, which is neutral. So there you have it. How many of you are currently bullish here in Moonvember? Please do let me know. Now let's dive into today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts with Bitcoin Bitcoin price action is likely to go next. And we'll also do a little bit of Ethereum TNA just because Ethereum has also uh, been pumping. So yeah, um, let's start right here. Bitcoin price analysis. Bitcoin shot up uh, above the ascending channel pattern November 9th, but the higher levels witnessed profit booking as soon as from the long wick on the candlestick, as you can see here in the Bitcoin one day candle chart. The RSI, as is the relative strength index, has been trading in the overbought territory for the past week, indicating that the bulls have maintained this buying pressure. So if the current rebound sustains, the buyers will try to propel Bitcoin slash USDT to 40,000 once again. However, on the contrary, if the Bitcoin price dips back into the channel, it'll indicate that markets have rejected the higher levels. That can pull the price down to the 20-day exponential moving average, currently sitting at $34,240, which is an important level to watch out for. A break below this level will tilt the short-term advantage in favor of the bulls. But now that we touched upon some TA for Bitcoin, next we got to discuss Ethereum because Ethereum made a major move yesterday with some major uh, news as BlackRock Ethereum ETF helped boost the price past 2000 for the first time in a very long time. That's right, the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock, with roughly $10 trillion in assets under management, filed for a spot Ethereum ETF on November 9th, four months after filing for the spot ETF uh, for Bitcoin. BlackRock's filing helped the Ethereum price soar past 2000 for the first time in over a year. That's right. BlackRock's intention to file for an Ethereum spot ETF had a bullish effect on the crypto market, helping Ethereum get past this critical resistance of $2,000 for the first time in six months. And here you can see the bullish Ethereum chart. And apart from ETH, other alts also saw significant gains before a flash crash with nearly a billion dollars in open interest being wiped out of the market within an hour. Now, millions of dollars in longs and shorts were liquidated due to the sudden price fluctuation. So be very careful trading with leverage. BlackRock's Ethereum ETF filing was confirmed after its 19B4 filing with the NASDAQ became public. The NASDAQ filed the 19B4 form on behalf of the world's asset manager with the SEC for a proposed ETF called the iShares Ethereum Trust. The move signals that the asset manager's intention is to expand beyond Bitcoin with its ETF aspirations, invoking various reactions from the crypto community. Now, here we go. Bitcoin proponent Yudi Wirthmeyer reacted to the news saying there is a second best, referring to the popular meme we all know of Michael Saylor, there is no second best, who believes that Bitcoin is the only true asset and that there is no second best. That's ironic, right? Now, other crypto proponents rejoiced in growing institutional interest beyond Bitcoin, including Raul Powell, who is a big Ethereum bull. Now, he called it the holy grail for asset managers as they can capture the yield and only give the price performance to the Ethereum hodlers. Others pointed out that BlackRock's ETH ETF interest suggests its spot Bitcoin ETF is a done deal. I think we can all agree on that one, just a matter of time. Now, an independent Ethereum educator drew attention to the impact of the Ethereum on the Ethereum yields of this ETF, claiming traders are going to absolutely salivate over the real yield that a staked spot Ethereum ETF can offer. Now, here's some insights coming from an analyst. Uh, I think I had that pulled up. Uh, from Alfred here. Let's see. Mike Alfred shares here. It was so smart of BlackRock to apply for the Ethereum ETF to distract the crypto bros from the fact that the Bitcoin ETF is about to be approved. They needed to reduce the buying pressure on Bitcoin while they finished positioning for the launch. And it worked like a charm. Well done, Larry Fink. And he makes a great point here because Bitcoin was pumping. It was about to capture 38,000. Then that news broke and the Ethereum dominance immediately took some market share away from Bitcoin, stopping the Bitcoin rally. Now, also breaking news, the number of addresses holding more than $1,000 worth of Bitcoin has hit a new all-time high. So congratulations to all the wallets out there holding 1,000 or more of BTC. And as Max shares here, Bitcoin is up 
over 100% since this interview 11 months ago with Daniela Cambone. How many of you watched this infamous interview? It was epic. It was where Max makes his predictions for the new year for 2023. And he shared that 2020,000 is in play and that the gold price is still the same price. I mean, 220,000 is currently Max Kaiser's short-term target. He also mentions here that Bitcoin is demonetizing gold, which it absolutely is, as the gold and precious metals markets are uh, manipulated by the, you know, uh, banking institutions and Wall Street, JP Morgan Chase, ain't nothing new under the sun. You know how it is. But let me know, fam, how many of you are currently bullish on Bitcoin and how many of you are bullish on Ethereum? And with that being shared, let's now dive into our next story of the day. We uh, broke down the Bitcoin technical analysis. We also broke down some of the Ethereum technical analysis. Now let's discuss deeper some Bitcoin ETFs, shall we, which is on everyone's mind right now. Check it out. Galaxy Digital founder Mike Novogratz told investors that 2024 will be headlined by institutional adoption of cryptocurrencies, which has drip, uh, will be driven by the pending approval of the Bitcoin ETFs. Right now, there's like a dozen of them pending approval by the SEC. Now, during Galaxy Digital's third quarter earnings call, November 9th, which was yesterday, Novogratz highlighted the firm's belief that approving several ETFs is now not a matter of if... But when the fund managers filed at Spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF apps with the US SEC in partnership with Invesco in quarter three of this year. Now, investors' sentiment has turned bullish in November of this year, with prominent ETF researcher analysts predicting the SEC will have approved 12 major Bitcoin Spot ETF applications by January 2024, with that deadline being January 10th. Quoting him here, 2024 literally is going to be a year of instant institutional adoption, primarily first through the Bitcoin ETF, which will be followed by an Ethereum ETF. As institutions get more comfortable, if the government gives its seal of approval that Bitcoin is a thing, you're going to see the rest of the allocators starting to look at things outside of that. And so money will flow into the space. Now, Novogratz added that institutional investment could come to a head in 2025 as investments in tokenization and wallets ramp up. The Galaxy Digital CEO added that a key focus for the U.S. landscape should be ensuring that the dollar-backed stablecoins remain a central cog in the wider cryptocurrency ecosystem. As he shares here, we are going to continue to be dollar dominant. We better have a dollar-backed stablecoin that reflects our values and is taken up around the world. And according to Novogratz, the Bitcoin ETF will bring a measure of institutional confidence and a significant amount of funding to the crypto space. As he shares here, this ETF is giving us all breathing space, putting life in the system. That brings in capital that allows the rest of the stuff to flourish. But I think if you look at the crypto long-term plan, it's right on target. Now, the potential influence of an Ether spot ETF was also brought up during the investor call. Galaxy Digital CEO said it's possible the approval might not be as well received as Bitcoin ETF, given that Ethereum's validating model is based on a staking model and staking yields. So it will be interesting uh, to see how the SEC responds. He also mentions, unless they can figure out uh, an ETF that actually passes through the staking rewards, it'll kind of be a subpar product from just owning Ethereum with someone like us and having it staked. He also added that the technical difference would be significant if investors were looking at yields between 4 and 7%, depending upon the method of staking. Now, utility remains an important factor, with Novogratz stressing that different blockchains and their native tokens need to serve a purpose and have stuff built on them to sustain their long-term value. So there you have it my crypto fam let me know if you're bullish for these bitcoin etfs and by what month do you think we get the green light from the regulators and do you think it'll all happen at the same time like a plethora of etfs being approved or do you think it'll be one at a time more like a domino effect with one following the other and if so who do you think will get the first mover's advantage please do let me know but anyways fam uh, let's now dive into our next uh, story of the day and discuss what's going on in hong kong there are rumors that we're going to have a spot etf launch there as well as they want to become a crypto hub and they already kind of are you know they're not considered mainland China, you know what I mean? It's on the outskirts, but they're like a technical 
innovational hub. I've actually visited Hong Kong. It's a uh, spectacular place to visit. It's like New York City on steroids, my best way to describe it. But anyways, here's what's going on in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is very ready for the next wave of mass crypto adoption with an influx of crypto talent that has been spilling into the aspiring digital asset hub, uh, according to Hashkey Capital. Speaking of Cointelegraph, this partner of liquid funds and research at the investment arm of a Hong Kong firm of Hashkey Group explained that the combination of Web3 projects, along with the crypto-positive regulatory developments, has primed Hong Kong for significant growth in the next four to five years. Quoting them here, you've got all of these new different projects with their founders and teams here, which is all real GDP, by the way. These teams are already boosting both banking and capital market activities. That's what's up. He also added that while crypto prices have reflected it, or haven't reflected it, the level of sophistication being developed in the sector over the past 18 months has been striking. Quoting him here, the actual technological improvements we have seen throughout the bear market has been quite astonishing. So I think from the tech side, we're ready for the next wave of larger mass adoption in the crypto world. Let's go. The reason for this bullishness for the region was based on the belief that the economy in Hong Kong is in dire need of a new driver, something he believes the crypto sector is ready to offer. Quoting him again, the GDP in Hong Kong in recent years hasn't been looking so largely due to COVID. So it needs a new driver, he said. So it's my theory that crypto and Web3 are those new drivers. Let me know if you agree or disagree with them. Now, on August 3rd of this year, Hashkey became the first crypto exchange in Hong Kong to receive the specific license that allowed them to offer crypto assets to retail investors. He admitted that while he is not directly involved in the exchange arm of Hashkey, he expects the demand for crypto products from local Hong Kong residents to grow as the government continues to shore up investor concerns by outlining its regulatory scheme for the sector. Quitting him again, the recent policy changes give retail investors safety because now you've got insurance and legal protections. You don't have to use online wallets to do self-custody. All you need to do is open an account on an exchange, and then you can use your Hong Kong dollars to buy Bitcoins and other cryptocurrency. It's quite easy. So for now, it's still a bear market. But when the bull market comes back, we can assume that people's outlooks will change quickly. Retail will definitely be coming back, especially when they have a lot of opportunities to buy securely with license exchange. Now, overall, he predicts that Web3 in Asia and Hong Kong will witness a very similar pattern of development to that of the GameFi sector in Southeast Asia in 2021, which saw Axie Infinity briefly become one of the most played games in the world. And in his view, while Axie was prone to massive speculation, the underlying model of development would be quite similar. Projects that are developed in the US and Europe could easily find the welcoming market in Asia. As he shares here, I think in the future, Asia will soon follow the same pattern. Protocols and infrastructure projects that are developed in the United States or Europe or Australia may not witness massive adoption where they're developed, but if they want to find a market, they can go to Asia. He also conceded that the growth would be less feverish than once seen in Southeast Asia with more of a sober and well-regulated focus on protocols and blockchain infrastructure as outlined here in place of a rampant speculation on gaming. Now, I'm curious, fam, how many of you are bullish on crypto? gaming coins, please do let me know. It's worth noting Hong Kong was rocked by the crypto exchange scandal in September in which an unlicensed exchange called JPEX allegedly swindled investors out of $165 million. And in breaking news, Justin Sun's exchange, I believe, just got hacked for $100 million as well, just FYI. Now, the fallout has since been described as one of the worst financial crises to have ever hit the region. And despite the debacle, Hong Kong's Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury assured a crowd of investors, government officials, and other regulators at Hong Kong FinTech Week that the JPEX drama hadn't affected the government aspirations to turn Hong Kong into Asia's crypto hub. Let's go. Hong Kong also pledged to tighten its crypto regulations after JPEX's alleged actions. The SFC also set up a task force with police to deal with illicit crypto exchange activities and updated
updated its policies on crypto sales as well as requirements. So there you have it. And also, I mean, I shared in previous episode, there could be an ETF coming out of Hong Kong. So not only are we going to get Bitcoin ETF spot approval in the United States, but more than likely we'll have competition in Asia as well as the Middle East. I don't know if it's Abu Dhabi or Dubai, but there's also talks of them launching a spot Bitcoin ETF. So the Bitcoin game theory is in full effect. Let's freaking go. But anyways, let's now dip into our next story of the day. Now that we covered that, let's discuss a potential 85% rally before the end of the year. You know what I mean? Talking about taking Bitcoin on up where it belongs. You know what I mean? The true value is so much higher than where we're at right now. The Wiley followed crypto trader says the Bitcoin can possibly soar by double digits over the remaining weeks of 2023. Let's go. Synonymous analyst Dave the Wave shared on X that it's not unthinkable for Bitcoin to rally to the record high of slightly over $69,000. How many of you can foresee a new all-time high before the end of this year? Let me know in that live chat, fam. Now, such a move would see Bitcoin soar by about 87%. From the current level. Now, the chart appears to suggest Bitcoin is attempting to break out of the upper bound of its customized logarithmic growth curve indicator, a move that usually precedes a surge in price action. The LGC indicator is typically used to identify the macro highs and lows of an asset while minimizing the volatility and noise, as outlined right here in this chart. He also said the Bitcoin could experience a pre halving rally, just like was the case in the run up of the 2020 Bitcoin halving. How many of you were here to witness that? Let me know. And according to the synonymous analyst, the previous Bitcoin mini parabola run just ahead of the 2020 halving saw Bitcoin surge from 3300 to around $14,000, which is a 324% increase. So don't forget what Bitcoin is capable of doing, fam. I recall back in 2021, Bitcoin soared from 16,000 to 69,000 in like less than 60 days. So it's going to get quite exciting. The next Bitcoin happens is expected to occur in April of 2024, roughly only five months out. Now, how many of you are bullish for this Bitcoin halving event? And how many of you, this will be your second or third halving? Will it be your first halving? Let me know in that live chat, fam. And let's now dive into our next uh, story of the day. And let's discuss a $175,000 target for the King Crypto, according to this crypto analyst. Here we go. Amid the current Bitcoin rally, we got crypto expert Caleb Franzen, the founder of Cubic analytics who recently shed light on his faith in the crypto reaching 175,000 per coin due to certain factors and when this might happen. So let's break this baby down. On November 8th, Caleb was interviewed by Thinking Crypto, where the expert revealed his optimism about Bitcoin. The expert thinks that the strength of the crypto asset will benefit the entire crypto industry. Amen. A rising tide rises all ships, right? According to Frazen, the strong belief in the crypto asset is due to the bullish indicators, which he observed in the Bitcoin charts. He put forward the idea of a critical support and resistance level at the 200-day moving average cloud. He also underscored how clear market signals are important, as he pointed out several factors factors that might bolster the Bitcoin price when he was asked about Bitcoin short-term and long-term price expectations. These included the Bitcoin halving, the potential approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs, and the non-recessionary rate cuts. So according to the analysts, a potential approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF could have a huge impact on Bitcoin. This checks out at the current price rally of the asset seems to have triggered by a false Bitcoin ETF approval news, which we all witnessed a few weeks back with BlackRock, which turned out to be false. It sent the market parabolic. The crypto expert further highlighted a large spike, which might lead to a 20,000 candle if the blanket approvals for ETFs were to happen. So talk about a God candle. Imagine that like 20,000 in a single daily candle. We just jump up from 37 to 57 like it ain't no thing. Send it and let's go, fam. In addition, due to several other reasons like the Bitcoin having cycle and a less restrictive monetary policy environment, Frazen expressed optimism the Bitcoin can reach 175,000 in the next bull run. Now, I personally feel that's conservative. I'll tell you why here in a bit. Now, while the expert gave factors that could propel the asset price, he also gave other factors to consider that could affect it 
negatively. Frazen highlighted the possibility of a fundamental macroeconomic recession risk as a possible bearish factor for the token. He issued a warning saying that if a recession were to take place, the value of the token and other financial assets can drop dramatically while emphasizing a recession risk. He also used the recession that occurred back in 2019 and 2020 to back up his claims. He asserted that the recession that happened within the period took the price of Bitcoin from 10,000 to 3,500. How many of you remember that after the COVID crash? And according to him, there is a possibility that something similar to this might happen if there is another recession. And in addition, he also brought up the possibility of exchange risk or possible fraud activities surfacing, which can cause corrections in the crypto market. Now, currently, Bitcoin is sitting at approximately 30. What are we at right now, fam? You let me know. Let's look. Uh, what do I got to look at here? We're currently at 37,200 at the time of this live stream. So slowly gaining momentum at the coveted 40,000 mark. Bitcoin's recent price breakthrough was believed to be a uh, butt trust in the presence of the golden cross and a rising 200 simple day moving average. A golden cross signal combined with the rising 200 day simple moving average presents an increasing long term trend. This is because these indicators support the current uptrend and offer a solid basis for further price growth for Bitcoin, as outlined right here in this chart. So there you have it, crypto fam. How many of you believe that we can hit $175,000 target this bull run? And by what year do you feel we're likely to smash that target? Let me know, fam, in that live chat. Now let's dive into our breaking story of the day and discuss the Bitcoin price action surging 10 to 100x from here. You do the math. 10x from 37,000 is $370,000 per Bitcoin, and 100x would take the King Crypto to $3.7 million per BTC. So let's break this down. I got some bullish price predictions. Let's start with the Giga Chat himself, Michael Saylor. He recently shared in an interview the following, which I transcribed Bitcoin is an asset class, and that's a major revolution. If Fidelity and BlackRock, and if 10 other ETF issuers all agree, the Bitcoin is an asset class which it is. It should be 10x to 100x bigger than it is right now. So we're talking about, you know, the Bitcoin market cap is currently sitting between 500 billion and a trillion dollars, probably closer to 500 billion. Let's actually look on coin market cap together real quick and see where we're at so we can make some projections together. Let's check it out. So right now, wow, the Bitcoin market cap is at $727 billion. So just shy of a trillion. So to run the math, uh, according to Sailor, if we were to 100x there, uh, we're talking about, I would guesstimate maybe a between a, uh, wow, can someone run the math? <laughs> it's not an even number. So, uh, but 100x that is a pretty damn big market cap. We're talking about uh, probably 70 trillion. I'm just ballparking it because I don't know the exact number. And then we have Max Kaiser who made a prediction a little bit back. He said, Bitcoin has already and will continue to outperform everything else so spectacularly by 100x or more that everyone holding fiat currency, stocks, bonds, gold, and all of the ish coins property, et cetera, will literally be impoverished. So there you have another 100x prediction. Do you think Bitcoin is likely to run against everything else at a factor of 100x? Let me know. And you run the math. I mean, if gold hypothetically were to soar, where are we at? 2000 today's prices for an ounce. Uh, so, you know, uh, Bitcoin for every, he's basically saying for every dollar gold goes up, expect Bitcoin to go up 100x. So would you rather have uh, minuscule gains or phenomenal life-changing gains? Those are the options for you right now. Now, here's some other predictions that Max Kaiser made. He said uh, he made these predictions, I believe, uh, a, a while back for 2023 uh, and moving forward. He said Bitcoin will beat gold by 100x, kind of like I just shared with you. He says altcoins will get shut down and go to zero many of which are. Uh, El Salvador will be debt-free by 2030, and this growth will be powered by the rise of the Bitcoin price action to a million dollars per coin. And he says it's a mathematical certainty. Now quoting him from uh, one of his predictions. So even 1% of that multi-hundred trillion dollar funds available moves the needle to Bitcoin and it moves it up considerably. And if we get, and he's referring to these major asset managers allocating into Bitcoin, if we get into the 5 to 10% range, then you start to really see it raise the 
ahead to the seven figure Bitcoin type predictions that people have been making, including myself, because Bitcoin is an asset class. Preach. Now, I have another prediction of another 100x from another influencer, one of the founders of PayPal by the name of Peter Thiel. He says, uh, check this out. This is actually a tweet I made a while back. Billionaire PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel shared his list of enemies, stopping Bitcoin from rising 100x last year while speaking at the Bitcoin 2022 conference in Miami, Florida. How many of you were there? I was. Let me know. Quoting him here, the enemies list is a list of people who I think are stopping Bitcoin. There is a lot of them. They tend to have nameless, faceless, bureaucratic perspectives, which is, of course, one of the ways they hide. Check this out. We are going to try to expose them and realize that this sort of what we have to fight for Bitcoin to go up 10x or 100x from here. In some perspective, at the time he made this prediction in 2022, Bitcoin was just north of $40,000 per coin. So he's ultimately calling for a $4 million Bitcoin price. He continues, the central banks are going bankrupt. We are at the end of the fiat money regime. Preach. The first person on the list is the one and only Berkshire Hathaway CEO, Warren Buffett. Thiel put up a picture of Buffett with two of his most famous quotes about Bitcoin, which we all know, rat poison squared, and I don't own any, and I never will. Then he opined, I think the sociopathic grandpa from o Omaha is perhaps the most honest and most direct in it. Thiel further noted that Buffett has a bias that makes him long on the fiat money system and money managers who follow the Berkshire Hathaway executive's advice will pretend it's complicated to invest in Bitcoin, which we all know is nothing more than FUD. Next up on the list, the next person on the list of enemies is JP Morgan Chase CEO, Jamie Dimon. And I'll stop you right there because I actually reacted to a short of Jamie Dimon the other day when he was calling Bitcoin a pet rock and a fraud and threatened any employee of JP Morgan Chase. If you get caught trading or touching Bitcoin, you will be fired. At that same time, that same week, he was purchasing mass amounts of Bitcoin and starting a trading desk. Tika Tawari exposed him. So when you have these major influencers, the enemies of Bitcoin, the Warren Buffett, the Charlie Mungers, the Jamie the Tapeworm Diamonds, when they're on national television making their rounds, bashing Bitcoin, why are they doing it? They're buying it behind closed doors. They're trying to crash the price, manipulating the market to take advantage of you. They're purposely misleading you. They don't want you touching Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only money they can't control. It's the only unconfiscatable money. It's the only perfect money. It's the only money with a finite limited supply and they don't want you to touch it. Why is that? It's a direct threat to the powers that be. It's a direct threat to the central bankers. Bitcoin was invented to decapitate the heads off the central banking system. You know what I mean? Like real talk, Bitcoin is an enemy to the powers that be. They may brush it, you know, like, oh, it's not a big deal, but this is all planned. This is an orchestrated attack. You must know who the enemies of Bitcoin are, right? Know who the enemies are. Anyone talking negative about Bitcoin, comparing it to a banana or a freaking pet rock, don't listen to them. You know what I mean? What did Jim Cramer say a few weeks ago? Mr. Bitcoin's going down. Sorry, Mr. Bitcoin. I wouldn't touch Bitcoin. It's going down. Uh, Bitcoin's up 40% since. They're here to mislead you. You know what I mean? Welcome to Channel Zero. Just want to preach the truth. You know what I mean? Because I'm sick and tired of these enemies of Bitcoin. But guess what? Bitcoin doesn't really have any real enemies because no enemy can stop it. Bitcoin's going to continue to do its thing re freaking regardless. But anyways, back here. The next person on the list of Bitcoin's enemies is JP Morgan Chase, Jamie the Tapeworm Diamond. Phil put Diamond's picture up with a quote. I don't call them cryptocurrencies. I call them crypto tokens because currencies have rules and laws behind them. Central banks and tax with authorities. The next picture he put up was of the BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink, who just if you didn't know, uh, Larry Fink, who is the CEO of BlackRock, right? He once called Bitcoin an index for money laundering a few years ago. Now, lo and behold, he's all in on Bitcoin, about to launch the first Bitcoin ETF in the world, right? Complete 180. But maybe when he was bashing it then, he was probably trying to buy it up and stacking it on the low. I wouldn't put it past them because these are corrupt mofos at the highest levels. You know what I mean? Just wanted to keep it real, fam. You know how it is. So yeah, let's get back to this right here. I I see huge opportunities in a digitized crypto blockchain related currency, and that's where I think it's going. Now, the PayPal founder added that Fink's quote is somewhat representative of the whole genre of Bitcoin attacks that need further context, stating that pro blockchain is an anti 
by Bitcoin term. Very typically, Phil then brought up the environmental, social, and governance standards elaborating on ESG. The label they have come up with, and perhaps the real enemy, is ESG. Wasn't Elon the FUD puppet must hide in behind this narrative on why he had to take stop taking Bitcoin payments for Tesla? Again, just more FUD. I think that ESG is just a hate factory preach. And shout out to Peter Thiel for calling them out. He stressed, you can always ask the question, what's the difference between ESG and the Chinese Communist Party? Well, when you think ESG, you should be thinking of CCP. Thanks for keeping it real, fam. It's the finance gen uh, gen uh, gerontocracy that runs the country through whatever silly virtual signaling and hate factory to them, like ESG. The billionaire concluded, this is what I would call and what we have to think of as a revolutionary youth movement. And we have to just go from this conference and take over the world. So preach. There you have it, my crypto fam. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, on some of these predictions, we touched upon Max Kaiser, 100x prediction, short-term target of 220,000. We touched upon Michael Saylor projecting on the back of these ETFs. We're going to see Bitcoin soar between 10x and 100x bigger than it is right now. And we also touched upon uh, Peter Thiel's prediction that the Bitcoin price can soar 100x. And again, from the time he made that prediction, Bitcoin was trading at $40,000. So he's ultimately projecting a $4 million Bitcoin price action.